how far could Sauron actually see? The Lord of the Rings himself, Sauron, hardly appears in the film franchise of the same name at all. Instead, he appears as a giant, all-seeing eye, able to pierce the hearts of men and elves and dwarves, searching far and wide for the one ring to rule all them. This is all very magical and metaphysical, of course, but what if Sauron's eye was an actual eye? Just how far and wide could it see? Now, I know that the Eye of Sauron in the movies and in the books isn't an actual eye. It's more like a representation of Sauron's spirit and will. There, I just saved you a comment. But the thought experiment is just too good to pass up. If Sauron's eye was actually a giant eye looking for the ring of power, how far could it see? How good would its eyesight be? Where would Frodo and the Fellowship be safe? What would fall squarely into Sauron's fiery gaze? Let's start by determining our variables and the values for them. Most importantly, we need the height of the tower, the height and width of the eye, and my axe. You don't actually need that. Scaling up the prop used in the Lord of the Rings films, Beradu <laughs> here, would be 14 to 1500 meters tall, almost twice as tall as any man-made structure on Earth, middle or otherwise. Using that same scale and measuring some scenes from the film, specifically, it looks like Sauron's eye is 25 meters tall and five meters wide. No! Oh. Sam! Sam! A 25 meter eye is absolutely enormous. As a comparison, the largest natural eye on Earth belongs to the colossal squid with a paper almost a quarter of a meter in diameter, almost 11 inches across. Less than a hundredth of Sauron's eye, but still impressive. The largest artificial eye in the world could be considered the Gran Telescopio Canarias, the single largest single aperture optical telescope in the world. Its eye opening is 10 meters in diameter. Certainly grand, but still less than half of Sauron's eye size. Dude, calm down. Don't you have like a lake to watch? With these dimensions, what is the furthest that Sauron could possibly see? Where is his evil horizon? 1,400 meters off of the ground, and assuming that Middle Earth's curvature is the same as our Earth's curvature, then the furthest that Sauron could possibly see, assuming that there are no obstacles like mountains in the way, is 130 kilometers, 80 miles. For you Lord of the Rings nerds, that means that seated at the edge of Mordor, the eye of Sauron could see me tossing Gimli all the way in Osgiliath. Yeah, you know how far that is away. But how far Sauron could see doesn't matter if the Dark Lord's eye has bad resolution. So what kind of detail could a peeper like that make out? Shadow facts, nope. My eyes were cheated by some spell. The angular resolution of some system, like a telescope or your eye, describes the ability of that system to resolve tiny details on some object. When light passes through a circular aperture, like your eye, it interferes with itself because light acts like a wave, and it makes patterns that look kind of like this. Now, the idea of angular resolution is as follows. If two points of light are very close to each other, they form a very small angle with your eye. And if your angular resolution is bad, those two objects or points of light will overlap and become indistinguishable. But if your angular resolution is very good, you can see those small angles and separate those two points of light into detail. And detail matters. A widely used estimation of angular resolution is called the Rayleigh Criterion, established by physicist and smart boy, Lord Rayleigh. Now, it says that the angular resolution of a system using a circular aperture is equivalent to a constant multiplied by the ratio of the wavelength of light that you are interested in and the diameter of that optical system. As you can see, <laughs> the larger the diameter, the larger the eye, in our case, the smaller the angle. And the smaller the angle, the more detail you get. 
Think of it this way. There are two objects that are equally spaced apart, but they are getting further and further away from you. As they get further away from you, you can see that the angle you have to resolve to see both sources of light individually gets smaller and smaller. If you cannot resolve this angle, if you do not have good angular resolution, that angle is too big, and therefore everything is gonna smush together and look like some indistinguishable blob. Eagles with famously good eyesight, much, much better than ours, get around this problem by increasing the diameter in this equation. Eagles have much larger pupils relative to us in the same lighting conditions. That's why they have as good as 22 vision. Just tell the other eagles to back off, I have their money. Flights to Mordor are expensive. Uh... Okay, so what about the angular resolution of Sauron's giant eye? Well, even though it looks more like a cat eye than a human's eye, it is so big that the math works out if we assume that it is circular about the same. So let's try it. Plugging in our 25 meter aperture and a middle ground value for the wavelength of visible light, we get an incredibly small angle just one micro degree. Assuming all the values that we did for Sauron's giant eye, it would have an angular resolution 10 times better than the Hubble telescope. Now that we know both how far Sauron's eye could see and how well it could see, we can do some math and work out what kind of detail at what distance it could see. Because one does not simply assume details visible from Mordor. If Sauron's eye was an eye like ours, it would have absolutely unbelievable vision, relatively speaking. 2020 vision is defined as being able to read an eye chart like this one. More specifically, you're able to read the tiny letters on the bottom that are only separated by 1.75 millimeters at 20 feet away, or six meters. Now, if you had very good eyesight, like 20, 10, that means that you are able to see something at 20 feet that someone with perfect vision can only see at 10 feet away. And if you had very bad eyesight, like 20, 100, that means you could only see something at 20 feet away that someone with perfect vision could see at 100 feet away. Sauron's eye would have 20, 0.002 vision. He would be able to read an eye chart perfectly, not from 20 feet away, but from 70 kilometers away. That's way better than eagle vision. That's way better than what we think is the limit for human vision. This is even way better than elf eyes. Lego last can kiss my Lego last symptote. Using Sauron's angular resolution, we could check the details of an object that Sauron would be able to make out depending on how far away that object was from Sauron's giant eye using simple geometry here. With one micro degree of resolution, the amount of detail that Sauron will be able to work out at a distance will be defined by the distance between A and B here. So let's go all the way out to Sauron's evil horizon, 130 kilometers away, and see what he could see. Do the math, and from this ultimate distance, Sauron's eye could see details that were just three millimeters apart. He could see from all the way in Mordor details that were just an Aragorn's sword width apart from further away than space is from the top of your head right now. Everything inside the Saurizen, therefore, would be visible down to the millimeter. And I think I have the ultimate example of this kind of sight. Now, I checked with a prop replica, and the moment that Frodo and Sam got to the edge of Mordor, if Sauron's eye was an actual giant eye, it would not only be able to see them, it would be able to literally see the spacing between the words on the one ring hanging from Frodo's neck. No wonder he was so anxious, my precious. No, must be stronger than tiny hobbit boys. <sighs> so how far could Sauron see if his giant all-seeing eye was a giant eye 
for real? Well, using the movie franchise for reference and some math, we've worked out that it would have a better angular resolution than the Hubble telescope. It would be able to see the spaces between a hobbit's toes from the distance the Shire is away from the old forest. It would be able to read the inscription on the one ring from dozens of kilometers away. In a universe without technology, with castles and swords and bows and arrows, this kind of visual power is as close as Sauron could get to being literally all seeing. Because science. Hey, bye. I mean, I get the eagle argument. Why didn't they just ride the eagles all the way to Mordor? But if you want to be nerdy about it, I'd imagine that the carrying weight, even for an eagle that size, does not equate to the entire fellowship. Their, the wingspan would have to be so much larger. How is that? Is that okay? Thank you so much for watching, Audrey. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing no matter where you are. If you're on Facebook, like it. If you are on YouTube, like it and hit that notification bell because we do a lot of other nerdy things on this channel. If you want more stuff from me, check out Natural Selection, a nerdy debate show only on Project Alpha. If you go to projectalpha.com, you can sign up for a free trial and vote on that show and watch it and get this show two days earlier than anyone else. Lucky you. Follow me and become Science on social media here and be good. Just generally.